Warp speed, Mr. Beringer. When I was looking around for a subject for this week's rant, um, I was uh, having a quick thumb through all the announcements, and one of the things that really struck me was the amount of marketing announcements that were coming from Beringer. Um, last week, I mentioned in the rant that Beringer marketing team had woken up and were starting to push uh, stuff on Instagram, Facebook, and general marketing uh, channels about new products that they were bringing through the pipeline. Most notably for me, it was the announcement that the UBXA desktop, or D, was on its way, together with the fact that the DS80 was moving forward through the Der Behringer Skunk Works. But this week, it would appear that Zephyrin Cochrane has joined uh, the marketing team and they've hit warp. So let's see what they've announced this week. Now I should point out, I am not gonna go into any detail of these products apart from the cursory top of the line glance at what they are. And you will see the products flash up on screen over here as I go through the various segments. But it is truly astounding how many products they have announced in one week. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go over to Instagram and follow me there. Go over to Facebook, follow me there. That's where the normal notices are. And consider becoming a Patreon. First up, Pro VS. Build as a polyphonic four voice hybrid vector synthesizer. Um, it's a quirky looking unit, and in fact, actually, as we go through this, most of the uh, one octave, two octave membrane units that I mentioned are quite quirky looking. In fact, I would actually say they're almost toy like in terms of the, the appearance. They're not meant to be toys, though, I should say that definitely by the specification of the unit if you go through and read the full specification, which I'm not going to do on this video. Um, it's a quirky looking two octave unit. It's got a membrane keyboard, which I don't like, but that's how it is, and a compact set of controls with a small LED screen. Um, this is very reminiscent of the whole Roland Boutique styling with the uh, key dock. The difference being that the key dock is a, a, is a mechanical keyboard rather than a membrane keyboard, but the whole sort of concept is very, very similar. Um, and also the key dock is an expensive add-on add to the boutique. Um, this model itself is mo modelled after a Profit VS, which is the Vector Synth, uh, from 1986. And unlike the, the boutiques, which a lot of these things, as I said, mirror, these units are being sold for sub $100, $99 to be precise in some instances, um, but significantly less than the potential boutique counterparts. Key features, 127 wavetables, 32 presets, arpeggiator, oscilloscope. Um, I suppose the oscilloscope is there that if it sounds absolute rubbish, you can have fun looking at how the waveforms are generated in the oscilloscope. JP4000, another four voice, hybrid paraphonic synthesizer, uh, replicated the Roland JP8000, apparently. Uh, again, this is a quirky one octave membrane keyboard unit. Um, appears to be smaller than the two octave unit. Um, it seems to have slightly bigger membrane keys, but the overall unit seems to be smaller. But there's no actually no dimensions mentioned in any marketing material for any of this stuff at the moment, okay? So um, it has a long list of functions. That, um, but the key ones are two analog oscillators per voice, two FM operators, or a two FM, FM, FM operator engine. I'm not quite sure how that all works. Um, but that's kind of all that's been released on that one so far, apart from the fact it's blue. The Saturn Soul. Um, this is stated to be a miniature version of another synth that Beringer are working on at the moment. Um, or they stated there's a larger unit in production. Um, again, 
this two active uh, octave membrane keyboard is the design of the unit. Um, unsurprisingly, if you look at the unit, the colour scheme that's used is very reminiscent of another classic synthesizer. Uh, and you wouldn't be surprised to see that the actual unit is modelled off a Jupiter 8. Key points are three VCOs, multi-mode VCF, arpeggiator, and a 16-step step sequencer. There's a whole raft of other features listed on this, again, for sub $100. This one does interest me, the Toro, or Toro as it's, as it's called. This is a dedicated bass synthesizer modelled on the Moog Taurus Rev 1. Uh, going after the market that wants that Moog grungy, bassy type sound uh, on the track. It's a two VCO, it has a ladder filter and a Euro rack style presets. Now, I have to be brutally honest and say, I'm not sure what Eurorack style actually means, because I don't possess any Eurorack. But that's one of the things, a couple of things mention Eurorack style stuff. Um, so, it's designed to operate across uh, five octaves of uh, the keyboard. So, that's the lower end of the keyboard, giving you grungy, bassy notes that people crave. Now, I'm not sure whether this next one was an announcement or an update, because at one point, Behringer gave a number of new uh, products they were announcing. And if I include this one, it adds up. If I don't, it's one less. So I think this is a new product. But effectively, it's the DeepMind editor app. So effectively, they are updating the DeepMind editor, um, and it should be available on uh, the latest PC and Mac platforms shortly. This one kind of amused me a bit. It's called the Proton. And uh, not content with cloning and reimagining other manufacturers' synthesizers and equipment, Behringer are now cloning their own equipment. Um, a few years ago, they launched a product called the Neutron. And uh, uh, those who are who have done physics will know that a neutron has to have a proton, and I suspect we will get another product called the electron. Um, but that's a physicist joke, so go watch the Big Bang Theory. Um, but basically, what they've done is they looked at the the product, the neutron, which I believe was launched about four years ago, um, and they've now come up with this proton desktop module. Um, it looks like. These desktop modules, there's a couple of desktop modules they've announced, could potentially be rack mounted. But again, there are no dimensions to the actual unit itself. It does look rather wide. It looks about 19 inches, but I wouldn't swear that if you took the end panels off, the uh, you could actually rack mount it. So, um, but I do think it could be rack mounted to get to effectively the left-hand side of the unit when you look it up there is kind of a patch board and the right hand side sorry, the right hand side of the unit is a patch board and the left hand side of the unit is controls. Um, and this is built as a semi-modular synth with 64 patch points dual oscillators with five blended waveforms. Um, oscillator sync um, which allows you to lock the oscillators together, uh, pulse width modulation and individual sub oscillators. So read into that what you will and how you're going to use this. The UB1. Um, single oscillate octave membrane unit, again very similar to the membrane units you've seen uh, previously in this video, um, with a little LED screen in the middle of it. Again, looks very toy-like. Um, not sure what this is actually styled on the moment. Um, UB tends to indicate that it's something from the Oberheim range, but they've, there's no, uh, in the marketing I've seen so far, there's no indication that it is a, uh, a clone or a reimagination of an Oberheim machine. But UB is either it's something from the Oberheim range or it stands for Yuri Beringer. I'm not sure <laughs> which way around this works, whether it's another synthesizer that uh, Beringer are bringing to market um, under its own name. Um, again, it's a dual uh, analog oscillator, a classic VCF, and an arpeggiation unit. It all wrapped up in a little box. 
the 2XM, another Eurorack style synthesizer. Uh, this is a classic polyphonic analog synthesizer, boasts four VCOs. So this is the first time I've seen a four VCO um, synthesizer, two multi-mode VCFs, two LFOs, and four envelope formats are the key headline uh, aspects of this particular synth. It says that it reproduces the circuitry of SEM2 uh, from the late 70s um, and will give you a 70s style synthesis. The Model 15. This one is described as a semi-modular synthesizer. Um, and is based on the Model 15, 35 and 55 circuitry of the late 70s. Um, it's, described, it's another desktop synthesizer with two VCOs per channel and it says it uses the, uh, the circuitry of this legendary synthesizer set. And this is hot off the press this morning. The Model D Soul. This one um, is another two octave membrane style unit of the kind of boutique uh, size. This one is modeled off the Mini Moog, three VCOs with a classic VCF and single LFO and two envelopes, plus a motion sequencer. And I'm not sure what a motion sequencer actually is because it doesn't say very much in the marketing about what it's designed to do. But there you go. Okay, it's very clear from that little lot that Behringer intends to release a lot of products to market. And they're the ones that have been announced. They don't include the products that we, well, definitely some of the products that I want. Um, there is one in there that I think would be quite interesting for me. Um, and that is, um, I think it's the 2XM. That sounds very interesting to me. Um, but until, of course, these things start to arrive in various locations that you can actually go and play with them, it's very difficult to see how you might incorporate that particular unit into your workflow. Um, but on that note, and for this week's rant, live long and prosper, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.